Hello! I am Zarkoon. This is World of Warships Legends. Today I bring you a video on the new Tier 5 American Light Cruiser USS Dallas. As you can see, the Dallas is in my port here, along with the Tier 6 Helena. Both ships are in early access, so you can only get them via the crates, the American cruiser crates that can be found in the Admiralty section of the store and they can be purchased with the, I think they're called Liberty Bonds, the currency that you get as you progress up the Lone Veteran campaign for which the American cruiser Wichita is the prize. As you can see the Dallas here is fully upgraded. I'm gonna look at my commander build very briefly for you and then go over the ship's stats before jumping into some gameplay that I think is representative of how the ship performs. I have got aiming systems mod 1 and steering gears installed although I am considering switching to propulsion because the rudder shift on this thing isn't too bad and I think starting and stopping might be a little bit more important since I don't actually think this ship is very good at dodging fire in open water. It can do it, it's just not ideal. And I think the propulsion might be the better choice. Let's take a look at the commander that I have on it. Whoops. We've got level 11 Norm Scott with Makawa and Yamamoto as inspirations. This is more or less my heavy cruiser build and I am using it on these light cruisers. I've only made one change however and that is instead of beyond range I have chosen burn it down XXL in order to get an additional fire chance. I feel like these light cruisers benefit more from this skill than from beyond range for reasons I'll explain a little bit later into the video. Anyway, the rest of my commander build is the same. Standard Norm Scott build igniter here, punch through, fixated, and fully packed. Now, taking a look at the ship's stats. Survivability, 28,300 hit points. Puts it right there, sort of in the middle of the pack in terms of light cruisers at the tier. Very comparable to the Leander, the La Galassonaire, and the Budioni, although the Budioni does have more hit points. Armor 6 to 89 millimeters. Don't know what that means. Don't have an armor viewer. I can tell you this thing is very lightly armored. Even HE can do quite a bit of damage to it. No real torpedo reduction to speak of, so don't get hit by torpedoes. You don't have to, luckily, because you do come with sonar. Artillery, it's got 10 152mm guns in the exact same configuration as the Tier 5 Heavy American Cruiser Pensacola. It's got two turrets with three guns and two turrets with two guns for a total of 10 guns. One turret of each type is in the front and the rear of the ship. They fire out to a range of 14.6 kilometers. On my build here, reload time of 7.5 seconds, 180 degree turn time of 20 seconds. Since this is also a tier 5 American cruiser, it makes some sense to compare it to the Pensacola, which has a reload time of 15 seconds and a 180 degree turn time of 45 seconds. So this is far more nimble in terms of turret performance than the Pensacola is. They're much lighter turrets, they shoot much smaller shells. Maximum HE damage, 2,100, 16.5% chance to start fire on my build, which actually gives it a higher fire chance than the Budioni uh, on my build with Kuznetsov. Maximum AP shell damage, 3,150, definitely not too bad. The secondary armament I won't talk about too much, except to say that I believe it is dual purpose secondaries, because this thing is excellent at shooting down those spotter or fighter planes, and if you didn't catch Wargaming's stream yesterday, 
They did confirm that they are in fact working on aircraft carriers and that aircraft carriers are going to come to the game, just not sure on when. So when they do, you might want a Dallas or a light cruiser with good AA around, and this one seems to have it. Maneuverability, 32.5 knot max speed, 650 meter turning circle radius. The 32.5 knot speed is pretty comparable to the other light cruisers of the tier. 650 meter turning circle feels a little bit wide, but it's manageable. And a rudder shift time of 6.4 seconds. With that rudder shift mod, I might change that out for propulsion and see what that does at some point. We'll see. Finally, concealment, 10.5 kilometer detectability range by C, which is pretty good for a tier 5 cruiser, reasonably stealthy. I can tell you that the tier 6 Helena can get even stealthier than this can. Anyway, now that we've gone over that, let's take it into a game and see how it performs. Okay, so we're going to be on North Domination Mode in the USS Dallas. Right off the bat, I will say that if you're wondering whether this ship is like its Tier 5 Tech Tree counterpart, the Pensacola, in terms of squishiness, I'm here to inform you that it is. It, much like the Pensacola, is a floating citadel of sadness. If you show broadside to an enemy battleship, they can delete you, potentially in one salvo. Even battleships with sufficiently large guns seem to be able to punch through your armor at any angle and citadel you. I've only been deleted twice, and it took a Fuso two salvos to do it, but I imagine if you put yourself in a compromised position, you can go down even faster. Now, the differences between this ship and the Pensacola sort of stop at the general look of the ship and the turret layout. These guns are much smaller. The Pensacola has heavy 203 millimeter guns. These are, of course, 152s. And the designation of light cruiser, in my understanding at least, refers more to the armament than the armor. So we're talking about the guns here. These shoot much faster than the Pensacola. They are capable of putting out a lot of firepower in a short amount of time. And they do have those floaty American shell arcs, reminiscent of the what was the only higher tier light American cruiser up until this point where this update came out and these ships were released into early access, the Atlanta. The shells don't aren't quite as extreme as the Atlantas, but they are very floaty, which means at longer distances they can be more difficult to aim, and that is part of the reason why I'm not using Beyond Range on Norm Scott. I don't think it actually helps you as much as an additional fire starting chance does, because this ship can of course function as an HE spamming menace against enemy battleships. Although the AP should not be discounted on this ship either. I didn't show you guys the description of the ship, but where it lists the pros and cons, it claims that the AP on this ship has a short arming time, which makes overpenetrations unlikely. And you're going to see just how effective the AP can be against broadside cruisers in this match, which is part of the reason why I picked it. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a great game in terms of teamwork. We have a single friendly cruiser pushed into the Alpha Cap. I'm kind of hanging around here, keeping the island between myself and the four enemies that are actually over there. We have only accounted for three of them, but there are four. 
Oh, I'm sorry, that's a battleship that is pushing in right now. A cruiser already pushed in and got demolished. The other two friendly battleships are hanging around back there. I will become kind of frustrated with them as this match goes on, because there is only a Queen Elizabeth here and three cruisers. Three battleships versus three cruisers should be no problem. They aren't all torpedo threats. One of them is, in fact, a Dallas. There's a Konigsberg, though. See that salvo there on the Queen Elizabeth? Starts a fire. Now, there is one thing about these 152mm guns. You can see the shatters that I'm getting off the Queen Elizabeth's armor. This seems to be more pronounced on more heavily armored battleships of the same tier or higher tiers. Luckily, we slowed down there and missed the Queen Elizabeth's shots. So these HE shells do seem to shatter quite a bit on the armor of tier 5, tier 6 battleships. And that's fine because even when they shatter, they still have a chance to light a fire, and that is a pretty good chance. The AP, however, seems to me to be effective on broadside battleships at medium to shorter range. Definitely at shorter range, it's a lot more effective. But if you find that the HE is shattering a lot rather than penetrating, I'd recommend trying to light a fire on the battleship and then switching to AP and shaving the battleship's hit points off with armor-piercing salvos. And that's kind of what this ship is all about. It is definitely death over time. Death by a thousand cuts, you see. It doesn't get the big knockout hits that the heavy cruisers like the Pensacola is capable of doing, although with AP on broadside cruisers you can still get pretty devastating salvos. There we shoot the AP at the Queen Elizabeth, clear the guns, and return to the HE to continue harassing him. This is not an open water dodgy kind of cruiser. The rudder shift isn't too bad. The speed isn't too bad, but the shell arcs being so floaty, you know, it makes them hard to aim, as I've already said, at distance. So what you kind of want to do, I think, in these American light cruisers, is find a good position to utilize the island cover and make the most out of your high shell arcs by lobbing them over islands at ships, harassing them, lighting them on fire, shaving off HP with the armor-piercing shells, and just generally being a nuisance and, you know, an HE spamming menace. You want to put yourself in a position where you can't really take return fire. If you do, you might not be around for very long. The ship barely has any armor to speak of, and... As I alluded to in going over the stats, the armor value is so low that HE shells from cruisers actually seem to do significant amounts of damage to this. But the AP against cruisers does significant damage in return. And the Dallas is capable of bouncing light cruiser caliber AP. So this Konigsberg, if he wants to shoot AP at me, which he's not, unfortunately, then I will be able to bounce his salvos if I am sufficiently angled. You can see that my AP salvos do get a decent bit of penetration on him. Actually, sorry, I'm shooting HE. It does do some penetration, and he's almost dead. That those two citadels on him were pretty devastating, so we're able to take him down. We want to try and bait these other cruisers to come out, because we're not in a good situation in terms of the game here. We've got a single battleship behind us sailing out in the middle of nowhere, not being effective at all. All the other ships that spawned with us decided to go into 
the cap circle one by one and die had all three of those battleships pushed up together they probably would have had a better chance at taking out the cruisers i would have been able to support them much easier in doing that and then three battleships versus a Queen Elizabeth shouldn't have been a problem. Nevertheless, that's not what happened, and we are definitely in a position to lose this game. I certainly cannot try to go take the Alpha Cap, nor can I go try to take the Bravo Cap, because there is a Congo in there, who is shooting at the retreating friendly battleship. I guess that's what he's doing. He's kiting the Congo. It's in New Mexico, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. Anyway, able to open fire here on the Queen Elizabeth. Unfortunately, it is able to return fire. So we do a decent job of dodging that salvo. It does minimal damage, not quite catastrophic damage. Aoba pops out. We pop him for a citadel, destroy his engine room. And then the follow-up shot, not quite a citadel, but you can see just how effective this AP is can be against broadside cruisers. If you are a cruiser facing this Dallas, don't show it your broadside. It will make pretty quick work of you. Unfortunately, we beached ourselves on an island. The Queen Elizabeth takes out one of our turrets, and we are not going to be around too much longer. I'm going to take another shot at the Dallas out there. The results are not spectacular. Two over-penetrations. But before we go down, we are intent on taking one of these ships with us. Now, the turret traverse on this, like I said, much better than the Pensacola's. These guns are a lot more manageable, a lot less restrictive, and you can get the turret traverse better if you choose to use Kincaid, who I've recently bumped up to 11. Haven't really tested him out on this ship, but I've been testing him on the Helena. So perhaps when I do the video on that, you know, we'll see how that goes. Another Citadel there on, I think that was the enemy Dallas. We're up to 80,000 damage right now, which is a decent game in this ship. 80,000 is kind of what I've been averaging in this cruiser. You know, these aren't extremely easy to play, but there we go. We've been taken out by the Aoba, but our shots are out, and... They connect for a citadel, take him down after we're dead, awarding us the It's Just a Flesh Wound medal. And unfortunately, our team has absolutely no hope of winning this game. They failed to take any of the capture points, and we are all dead now, apart from two battleships. So, what do I think of the Dallas? It's a decently strong light cruiser for its tier. Uh, the shell arcs are nice for lobbing over islands, but the nature of the light floaty shells does make it a difficult ship to be an open water HE spammer. You do probably want to look for concealment in the form of islands whenever you can. You can definitely spam HE against battleships to pretty good effect, light fires on them, whittle them down. You can also get nice AP salvos into the broadside of battleship superstructure, and of course the AP is fantastic at demolishing cruisers. The HE, again, even though we didn't come up against one, is, as you would expect, absolutely fantastic at dealing with enemy destroyers. You can take them out in a couple salvos. It does come with hydroacoustic search, which makes torpedoes easier to spot. And generally, it's a very solid light cruiser. It is more of a logical successor to the Tier 4 Omaha, which is also a light cruiser. So if you jumped from the Omaha to the Pensacola, and you found the jump to be somewhat jarring, and the playstyle didn't suit you because you like the rapid-fire HE spamming light cruiser types, then the Dallas is going to be more comfortable for you. It's much more of a logical successor to the Omaha. And then the Helena, after this, seems to be a pretty strong ship, in my opinion. Unfortunately, this is going to be a loss, and we're going to wrap it up here. If you want to get the Dallas, 
you're going to have to buy the crates, otherwise you can wait till the next update when the ships come out of early access and become available to grind. So, we're going to cut it here because nothing else is going to happen in this battle. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not done that already. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.